Good afternoon. We are gathered here to remember with joy the life and legacy of Hugh Cumming. Let us begin by opening our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious God, you hear our cries, and we come here today to cry out with the confident hope that you are listening to us. You come to us in our grief and in our sadness, O Lord. And so we come here today to feel you wrap us in a loving embrace, to wipe away our sad tears and assure us that we are not alone. Because, holy God, you never let death have the final word. We come here today to bear witness to the promise of new life in the next world and in this one. Saving God who can turn grief into hope and sadness into joy, we come here today to release our grief and to, to allow ourselves to be transformed and to begin to find joy in the midst of heartache. O Lord, be present with us in this time of worship. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's lift our voices up together with hymn number 744 from the Blue Hymn Book. Hymn number 744, Will Your Anchor Hold?
please be seated. And now I would like to invite Hugh's son, Ewan, to come up and share with us some remembrances of his dad. So welcome to you, Ewan. Hi, everyone. It's been over 50 years since I've been up here, I think. <laughs> Early 70s Christmas pageant. And by the way, S, S is for sheep, <laughs> whose wool kept the Christ child warm, <laughs> or something along that line. Few coming loved sailing. He came in a bit late to the game. He got his first boat when he was 44. But he had loved boating in Loch Lomond on his father's powerboat in his 20s and sailing with his many friends here in Newfoundland. He loved being on the water. He loved many things, but he particularly loved boating. <coughs> well, that didn't help. <coughs> and that is where I can steal the term that best describes our father. <coughs> That's just the water. Doing okay. <coughs> Whose idea was that? That's the term that best describes our father, spouse, grandfather, and friend. He can best be described as a steady hand on the tiller. Dad was the epitome of a solid supporter and guiding figure when it came to his family. He didn't get animated or excited, unless his wife said it was necessary. <laughs> As children and young adults in his house, Jane, April, Matthew, and I all agree that his approach was to listen and provide quiet guidance and trust, believing that we would try and honor that trust. And we did try, for the most part. Dad was very respectful and proud of Travis's military career as well, as he was with all of our careers and life choices. Dad would entrust us with some serious stuff. When the sailboat had only been in the family for a few weeks, I convinced him to let me bring it into the berth and dock it, which is pretty much the last hurdle for me taking the boat out with my friends. And it's also the riskiest part of any sailing trip. And this was at the age of 19. After getting forward and reverse confused and ram ramming the dock pretty much at full speed, we dusted ourselves off, picked ourselves up actually, and went back out and did it a couple more times that day. That was the kind of guy Dad was. He wanted us to succeed. Plus, he probably didn't want to go out the next day either. Um, <laughs> today, we talk about helicopter parents who make and clear the path for their children. Dad was more of a Coast Guard parent. He was there, even if just over the horizon, whenever needed. Dad was also someone who made deep and meaningful friendships. Many of his generation are gone, but the roots remain, and those roots have been very apparent in recent days. I like to think that we learn to foster good relationships by, by his example. Dad did have a dry sense of humor. He was a master of the backhanded compliment. The one where you think, oh, thanks, before saying, hang on a minute. <laughs> All was followed by a smile and a twinkle. The old bugger did it again. And he was a flirt to the end, milking the charming Scotsman thing at every turn. Just ask the staff at St. Pat's, who are truly caring and phenomenal, by the way. He did pretty well at work. But that's just what happens between all the important things. He believed in community service. He was a manager and an elder at St. David's here. A founding member of the Wadford Valley Rotary Group, was in kinsman, assisted in the startup of the Parkinson's Society in Newfoundland, and became executive director. He drove for Meals on Wheels, and I know there are other things he did as well. And um, that was a, it was a part of, of his life and their lives. He was also a poet who might have given Robbie Burns a run for his money on a bad day if Robbie was hungover. Um, <laughs> every birthday and Christmas, there would be a short but topically relevant poem in, our, in your card, in your Christmas card or your birthday card. In the spirit of that, April, my sister has written a poem which I will attempt to do justice to as follows. And if I scroll up, here. Papa Hugh, 
Our dear old dad, with the eyes so blue, raised a family of three which slowly grew. Always a whistle or a song on his lips. He was such a present, presence and his sorely missed. Captain Hugh was our mainstay and talisman proud. Brigus, Conception Harbor, adventures abound. The music he loved, we loved as well. Classical and jazz had the stories to tell. The sparkle in his eye when he walked into view, when we walked into view. He loved to see us, even with an insult or two. His gruff exterior made soft by a hug. One thing we knew, we surely were loved. Papa's lap was a soft place to land, for the abundance of love for the grandchildren around. From the mouse in his beard to the good to be seen, his jokes and his quips weren't always so clean. So we say farewell to the Scotsman today. With tears in our eyes, we send him on his way. For a small family of five which grew and expanded, we will be forever grateful for where we have landed. To Dad.
Let us pray. Heavenly God, as we prepare to turn to your scriptures, I pray for the words that I have prepared. I pray that your spirit would be upon them, that they would be words of hope and of challenge for your people today. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 21. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. This story is titled, Jesus Calms the Storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Then they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A funeral can be many things. It can be a time of mourning together, as each of us grieve the loss, a loss of a husband, of a father, a grandfather, a friend, or a companion. It can be a celebration of a life that was fully lived, with fond memories being shared and jokes being retold. And it can also be a chance for each of us to consider how short life is, and to reflect on the impact that our own life is having on the world and the people around us. Today, as we remember Hugh and his legacy in the lives of those around him, we naturally wonder what will be said of us. Of course, he wasn't perfect, but he was loved and will be remembered with admiration and happy memories. I hope the same is said of me one day. It's always really difficult for the family to speak at times like this, so uh, thank you to Ewan for getting up and doing that. And one of the key difficulties that I usually hear from people is that you can't compress a whole lifetime's worth of memories down into one speech. People are complex, and it's hard to get all of that complexity across in just a few minutes with often not a lot of notice. But when Hugh's family were talking about him with me, there was one part of what they all said that I want to reflect on today. They said that he was a man who would give you his trust. And they said that again today. Now, I had in here uh, that I wasn't going to give the name of the child who this was, but then you and went ahead and told the story anyway. I said that when one of his children that I won't name accidentally put the boat in full ahead instead of reverse and rode the boat right up onto the wharf, I, Dad took him back out again to do that parking maneuver again and get it right this time. And as I was sitting there and I was thinking about my own relationship with my kids and what I would do if one of them drove my boat right up onto the dock, <laughs> I thought, well, he was lucky to get a hand on the tiller again for the rest of his life. <laughs> and as I thought about that, that sense of trust that, uh, that their dad had in them when they were out on that boat, I was reminded of the gospel reading that we heard today, the story of Jesus sleeping through the storm. As the waves wash over the boat that he's in and his disciples are despairing, these seasoned fishermen that he's called uh, to, to walk with him, Jesus is there sleeping in the stern of the boat on a cushion. That's trust. No backseat driving from this son of God for these people trying to get across the lake. And that was a characteristic that marked so much of Jesus' ministry and, and the, the gospel story in general. One of the things that's the most surprising to me in the, in the gospels is that you realize that these disciples from this story, these are the ones that Jesus leaves in charge of the whole church. He trusts them with his mission. And after he is risen at Easter time and he's shared a few meals with them, he ascends to heaven and he puts his trust in the disciples working with the help of the Holy Spirit. And lo and behold, here we are. They made something of it. If we want to be people who live our lives like Jesus Christ, we need to be people who give our trust to others. Easter is past, and we do carry that hope in the resurrection. That's something that we're here to remember and to celebrate today. We have hope that God has more in store for us and those we love. And for Hugh, a life free from poor health for him, and full of joy and freedom and peace, where the wind is always blowing just right, so you never, ever have to tack. Faith is, after all, choosing to put our trust in God, saying, I don't know how you will do it, but I know that you will not crash, and you will bring us safely into harbor. 
We trust God, that he who lives on beyond even our fallible memories of him, and we trust that we will see him again in glory. In Hugh's life, trust was a gift that he had learned well to give to the people around him. And it was a gift that I have heard warmly appreciated by those who received it. So as we reflect on that, may we trust those around us who deserve it. May we not be too proud to share the tiller, because trust is a meaningful gift to give. And now I'd invite you to stand as together we spend a moment remembering Hugh and his impact on our lives. So please stand with me as you are able. In this service, we remember how many people can be impacted by a single life. Hugh was many things to many people throughout his years. Son, husband, father, grandfather, leader, helper, friend. We pause for a moment now to remember the impact that he had on each one of us. Remembering our earliest memories of him. Remembering the last time that we saw him. And all the meaningful moments in between. We pause for a moment to recognize his death, each of us grieving that the world is less than it was because Hugh is no longer with us. We cry out to God and lean on each other for comfort because our world is broken and we wish it wasn't. And we pause for a moment to recognize the legacy that he has left stamped onto our hearts. The lessons that we learned from him. The things that we saw in him that inspired us. And the paths that he helped to put our feet on. We remember the good that we received from him and recognize that it is now entrusted to us to be passed on to others. Please join me in a moment of silence as we remember Hugh together. Let's join together to sing a good Scottish hymn, number 670, Amazing Grace.
be seated. I'd ask that you bow with me in prayer. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you, Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. You tasted death for all humanity, and by rising from the grave you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you, Holy Spirit, author and giver of life. You are the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Holy God, you see us as we are, and you know our inmost thoughts. We confess that we fail to live in the ways that you have commanded us. We have not always sought or done your will. We have not lived as your grateful children, nor loved as Christ loved us. As we face the death of our beloved brother Hugh, we remember the words of love we did not find the time to speak. And we remember the hurt and pain we may have caused him in his life among us. We confess that our conduct towards others you love is just as lacking. Saving God, apart from you, we are nothing. Only your grace can sustain us. Only you can mend our brokenness and give us abundant and overflowing life. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us, heal us, and make us whole. Set us free from our sin and restore to us the joy of your salvation, now and forever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Hugh. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together with the words of the Lord's Prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy, who forgives all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. As you go from here, I invite you to follow the family out the exit door here at the front of the sanctuary and downstairs for a reception where there's some tea and coffee and refreshments. And as you go, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this and every day. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you. 